I will show you how to solve this by using Okay, Professor Pan, this right here is for you. We are going to solve y prime is equal to y and y of 0 is equal to 1. I know some of you guys might notice that the answer to this right here is just e to the x, isn't it? Yes, I know that too. But how many ways do we know to solve this differential equation with this initial condition? And let me tell you guys that Professor Pan he did a video recently, five ways to solve this. In this video, we're going to look at a very simple differential equation, one that you would see on the very first day of a differential equations class, but we're going to solve it five ways. So this is one of my favorite problems to put on a final exam for a differential equations class because it's a pretty easy problem. It builds confidence, but it does give the student an opportunity to learn about all the techniques that they've learned about throughout the entire class. I will have the link to the video in the description for you guys. And you guys will love his channel because he also does a lot of other stuff such as the Puna exam questions, differential equations number three. So be sure to take a look. And if you guys like content, just go ahead and subscribe. Now, so what am I going to do right here though? I will show you how to solve this by using Euler's method. And you might be wondering, isn't Euler's method just a numerical method to solve differential equation? Well, yes, but I can also make this work right here, okay? So let me demonstrate. And let me remind you guys, this right here is of course our x0, the initial x value, and this right here is our initial y value. And to get the new y value, this, this is what we are gonna do, which is the formula yn plus one is equal to yn, the previous y value, plus h, which is the step size, and then we multiply by h, I mean f of x n y n like this. And I do have a proof on this right here. You guys can also go check that out. The link to that video will be in the description for your convenience. What's f of this though? Well, that's exactly the y prime. This right here is our f of x, y. It's not so bad because this is just y. So it's very nice. So I'm going to use the Euler's method to solve for y of x, right? And of course, y of x will be the solution to this differential equation with that initial condition. And this is how we are going to do it. Start with x0, which is 0, and then y0, which is 1. Okay, x1. Remember, h right here is our step size. And because the initial x value is 0, so the next x value is just 0 plus h, so you have h right here. In fact, x doesn't matter, you'll see. Anyway, this right here, y1, or x does matter, but you'll see. y1 is going to be the in previous y value, which is the 1 right here, the previous y value. And then we add h, which is just always h for now, right? I will tell you guys what I mean by that. And then we multiply by f of xn, yn, meaning that you throw in this and that into here. And you see, this is what I mean by x doesn't matter in our differential equation right here. You don't have to worry about this, right? And just putting one in here. Well, if you're putting one, you just have to multiply by one, so like that. So as you can see, y1 is just nicely equal to one plus h, like that. Now, x2, now we are at h for the, y, uh, for the x1. I have to add another h, so that's 2h, good. Then, y2, what we do is, we look at the previous y value, namely 1 plus h, the previous y value, and then we add the step size, which is h, and then we multiply by, we throw in this, which it doesn't matter in there, we just have to throw in this in here, and that's exactly just 1 plus h, right there. So I just put on 1 plus h, like this. Notice! Both of them have the 1 plus h, of course we can factor that out. And then, don't forget that we still have a 1 right here, and then plus h right here. So all in all, we get 1 plus h squared. That's very cool. Right? And let's do one more. x3 is of course 3h, and then y3 is the previous y value, which is right here. Namely, 1 plus h squared plus the step size h, and then we multiply by, you throwing this, into this right here, which is just that again. So I just put down one plus h squared. 
And you bet, yes, we can factor it out one more time. So 1 plus h squared. And then yes, 1 plus h right here for the leftover. And yes, this is going to be 1 plus h to the third power. I think you guys can see a pattern real quick. Dot, dot, dot. Well, if you would like, this is xn. And of course, that's just going to be n times h. Very nice. And then, dot, dot, dot. This right here, yn. This right here is just going to be what? You see, y3 is just 1 plus h to the third power. So if you have n right here, of course, this will be 1 plus h to the nth power like this. Now, what good does this do though? Hmm. Go back to the step size. We have to make sure we choose a good step size so that this right here will converge. And the good step size, of course, as small as possible. And this is how we can do it. So notice how we want to get to x. Imagine, originally, we are at 0. And the x is just like any number. So let's say 17 or so. What we are going to do is, I'm going to pick h to be, right? I'm going to pick h to be, wherever the x is, divided by n, n many times. And then I will take n to be infinity. Good, huh? So as you can see, this right here, I will just tell you, well, h is x of n, so we have 1 plus x over n, and then raised to the nth power, isn't it? That's very good. Now, let me just tell you guys that y of x, this right here, well, we can just go ahead and take the limit, right? Just go ahead and take the limit as n goes to infinity. And let me see. And I'll just put this down in black. 1 plus x over n to the nth power like this. Right? Just take the limit as n goes to infinity of the yn expression like that. And this right here, I call this to be the fact. And yes, I do have a proof on this. You guys can go check that out. I have a video, so go ahead and check that out. So have a look here. Well, the a is our x. So I will just indicate that a is equal to x. And then our b is just equal to 1. So by the fact right here, this right here will be e to the x times 1, namely e to the x. And... Just like what I told you guys about seven minutes ago, the answer to this right here is e to the x, and we are done.